John here guys and today we're talking about the Diatone L3. This is an exciting release. It's, you know, okay, Diatone's releasing all these aromas. Somebody over at Diatone is a huge tomato fan to be sure. But what this is significant, it's kind of a scaled down version of the L4, which is their long range model meant to compete with the Flywoo Explorer. Well, they decided to put three inch arms on it, some slightly smaller motors, make it a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, and a little bit more of a park flyer. And this is significant because this is the Diatone Cube 339, a Diatone's three inch two pick sweet spot that I have loved for years. This is probably one of my most flown quads Ever. You can see I upgraded the camera to the toothless uh, nano starlight, whatever the heck you call that thing. And this is just gobs of fun, gobs of power, so controllable. But a lot of times I thought to myself, this is so much fun, but it's set up in kind of a bottom battery mounted racing configuration. What if they kind of took some of the same formula and built it in a freestyle configuration with a top mounted battery, get a wide arm stance so the props are out of view. And they took it one step further by having this really nice um, long range style antenna out here. And so does it accomplish giving you that feel? Well, yes and no, but mostly yes. <laughs> And the reason why I say no somewhat is because there is a 50 gram difference between these two. This is about 67 grams with the strap and everything receiver. And this one with crossfire is about 120 grams. So about 50 grams difference. Well, the reason why I'm not worried about that is because even with a larger battery, um, you're still gonna be way under 250 grams so I, at first I thought this would be perfect for a 650 milliamp 4s pack because these are 4s components um, but before I get into the how it flies let's talk about the specs okay this is using Diatone's toothpick 25 amp board that I reviewed here on the channel Diatone's um, VTX that they came out with very recently the same one that's on the taken two and a half inch that I reviewed recently. This is the Runcam Nano 2 camera, very solid camera choice. What I really like the most about this entire thing though, is these brand new Toka motors. Look how notchy they are. That is a sign of maximum power. These are 1206. So this was an 1105 um, motor right here. They've increased the stator volume significantly to 1206 and it's a 3600 kV motor. That is pretty much a 4S kV. They advertise this as four to 6S capable. I don't think I would really want 6S on here. Um, it comes with a lot of extras. It comes mounted up with this beautiful Crossfire Immortal T antenna holder at the back. You see I have it mounted right there. And it actually holds the Crossfire receiver up at the top towards the top of the top plate. But what I like about that though, at first glance, it looks like that's attached to the top plate. It's not. So you take the top plate off the receiver holder and everything. Somebody did some really thoughtful 3D designing on here and they are giving you all these prints. They're actually already installed for you. They have um, a receiver connector on there. It won't connect to your crossfire, but you just snip that, solder those four wires and everything else is done for you. So that's what I did. Put crossfire on here because you could take this long range if you so chose. And this is a fairly inexpensive option, I believe, uh, for this version, it's only about 160 bucks. There's also a DJI version. That's probably, if I had the choice, what I would go with. Um, like I said, 120 grams dry weight. That is very light. Um, the other thing they also give you is some other nice extras like this buzzer that's already installed. A lot of Dynatone models give you the buzzer, but they don't install it for you. And due to my significant issue that I have that, you know, you could just call it laziness, I never seem to install those on there. So I like that they did that for me. That means I'll have a nice loud buzzer should I ever need it. I also like that they include, in addition to a lot of different 
extra hardware, screws, stuff like that for you if you ever want to swap those out. They give you actually GoPro style mounts for the front and the back if you wanted to do like a following, you know, look back camera situation like that. Uh, but the other thing that I really, really like is they give you two sets of props, but two different sets of props. They give you the HQ 30, uh, the 1.8 pitch, three inch, and the HQ 2.5 inch, three inch. Um, now I love the 2.5 pitch. It's just perfect, it's perfect three inch prop. But if you weren't really familiar with what kind of prop you wanted, if you didn't know if you wanted a mid range prop or a light pitch prop, you this is really going to help a lot of users and it will help you really to figure out like what's the difference in pitches um, by them giving you a light a light pitch and a medium pitch i really like that they did that the design is beautiful um, they have this really nice aluminum camera cage at the front so that you have maximum camera protection on this thing um, it looks like the arms are it's it's weird because it's like a three-piece arm setup right the the front arms are one piece going across and then you have two of these rear arms that are like this giving you this dead cat flavor to this thing these motors are exceedingly powerful you can see some in some of my dvr like it was so powerful it was kind of hard to manage i initially went out with a 650 milliamp pack but it was just too light the weight on that with everything was 190 grams so very very light uh, but it was too light. I mean, I was floating off the ground. Uh, I was flying along at less than 10% throttle most of the time. A lot of times like seven, eight percent and I was just having a constant uh, forward momentum. I had to land, increase the camera angle, but it was still so much power. So you're gonna want more like an 850 or maybe even a 1050 milliamp battery pack that's going to give you a lot of flight time uh, except for the 1050 you're probably going to get something along the lines of eight to ten minutes of uh, flight time depending on how you fly and you know i just tend to like these taller narrower motors uh, i like how they feel a little bit better than say a 1404 I really like this 1206. It's gobs of power. And look how handsome these Toka motors are. This sort of a brushed aluminum with this orange accents on the top side right there. So then that brings me to my final point. And is there really any point in keeping this three inch when you could just have a four inch? Here's the Flywoo Explorer. You can see the mid sections are actually longer in this three inch right here. Um, so the only difference in being able to run four inch is just that the arms are a little bit longer on the Explorer. So why wouldn't you? This has, I mean, it, this is so punchy, man, but uh, you know, you're always gonna, a little bit more disc area never hurts. And for a little bit of weight increase now, they advertise the Flywheel Explorer at about 133 grams, but with DJI, with the strap, with the buzzer, with the GPS, this is actually like 167 grams. Okay, so there is like a 40 something gram difference between these two. So bottom line for you, should you go with the three inch or the four inch? I mean, there's always the slippery slope, you go bigger. If you go to four inch, well, you might as well go to five inch. If you go to five inch, you might as well go to six inch. Before you know it, you're trying to fly a giant X class in your driveway. No, this is pretty much what I always wanted. A free style version of this. It shifts the power um, to give you that free style pop and punch. Whereas this one still had a lot of power. It was super controllable. So this is like a race quad this is like a freestyle quad. It does have power though, that I would think if you wanted to carry like a naked GoPro or an Insta360, I think you would have a lot of fun. Um, the other thing that I like that is that they managed to make the prop line below this top plate. So if you did have a camera mounted on here, if you did have a wide battery mounted on here for the extra long flight time, you don't have to worry about the props hitting that thing because they have arranged this thing so precisely. Uh, great job, Dietone. I have a feeling that these um, are gonna be some of the best quads of the year. So should you go with the three inch or the four inch or the Dietone or the Flywoop? If you want maximum flight time, period, 
you know, the flywheel, the flywheel, the flywheel. But if you think you might crash sometimes, if you want extra power, if you want extra design features, if you want maximum camera protection, you gotta go with the diatone. You do sacrifice some of the flight time for this craft, but flight time's not everything. In fact, it's rarely on my top five list of priority. This is what I've been wanting for for years and years. So thank you, Diatone, for finally listening. A three inch of my very own oh, that flies exactly how I want to fly it. Um, I am curious though, if I just kept this formula the same, stretch the arms a little bit out, use these same motors instead of the larger motors that are on the four inch, how would it fly? I'm a little curious about that. Stay tuned, maybe I'll get my hands on a set of those arms. Thanks guys. Thank you.